Wait. My, my name is Douglas Remington. In this preview, you will witness the moments in history that played a pivotal role on mathematics. Islamic mathematics unfolds with different contributions to mathematics that key players who influenced the mathematical world and mathematicians who developed these ideas and became well known in the mathematical world. Islamic mathematics originated from the Prophet Muhammad. He actually encouraged all the study of mathematics in, that, in the Islamic region. And Islamic mathematics, actually, it all begins in the House of Wisdom, which is now, in present day, Baghdad. Okay, so the House of Wisdom is actually where all the mathematical scholars from all around the world try to translate all the mathematical documents. And the person in charge for this was a boy from a son from a caliph. His name was um, Al Mamun, and he tried to translate as many pieces of the mathematical documents as possible from Greek, um, Hindu. Hebrew and Syriac Persian, as possible, as many as possible, into Arabic. Now let's begin with the mathematicians. One of the most important mathematicians in the history of Islamic mathematics is Al Khwarizmi, and he was known as the father of algebra. Al Khwarizmi was born in the 9th century A.D. He was a Persian mathematician, scientist, and an author. He might have well lived in 780 A.D. to 7 to 800 or 845 A.D but no one knows really for sure. He lived in the town, which is known today as Kiva, but during the time which he lived in the town, um, it was known as Khorizami. After he lived in Khorizami, he moved with his family near Baghdad, and he completed all his work um, from 813 AD to 833 AD, and all of his works were written in Arabic. Algebra, Cartography, Geography, and Astronomy. He solved linear equations in a logical way. And he solved linear equations and quadratic equations that paved a new way into algebra, as was written in his books. Al Khwarizmi made contributions to mathematics and also gathered information from other sources. He gathered information from Greece, India, and all other information that he could gather. Such as he also he also contributed to the number system. Okay, Al Khwarizmi made contributions in the field of trigonometric functions, revision on conic sections, and calculus. And he also wrote a book on algebra and geography. The Jewish calendar and the sundial. Okay, so that's a little introduction about Al Khwarizmi. So now let's actually get an intro at how he actually solved these problems and set them into motion. Al Khwarizmi was a famous mathematician because he solved mathematical problems in Babylonian style. He was also famous for solving complete, for complete square, as we do today in school, and also square root problems. Al Khwarizmi, he introduced the a mathematical concept of decimal notation. He also wrote a treatise of Kitab, and he solved, and even like how we complete the, we use complete the square, and today in schools, he used it, he also solved complete the square in a geometrical fashion. So let me show you. But before 
I'm going to show you, but before I show you in the square, I'm going to show you how we solve the quadratic equation. Okay, so for this equation, x squared equals 40x minus 4x. You would add 4x minus 4x to both sides, and then you'd get 5x squared equals 40x. The next step, he would divide 5 by both sides and get x squared equals 8x. Next, he would factor out the x, and it would become x times x equals 8 times x. He would take out the x, as you can see here, and the solution would be x equals 8. Okay, so for this quadratic equation, 50 plus x squared equals 29 plus 10x. He would subtract the 29 on both sides, so you can see it now. And he would get 21 plus x squared equals 10x. After that, he would subtract the 10x on both sides and get what we formally know as quadratic equation as x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals 0. And he would factor that out to get x minus 7 times x minus 3 equals 0. And x minus 7 times x minus 3, both in parentheses, equals 0. And both the solutions, both two of the, so two of the solutions would be x equals 7 and x equals 3. Good job. Okay, so this is the way Alfred Zami solved in the square. So he would draw the quadratic equation x squared plus 10x equals 39. He would start off by drawing the square with x on both sides. And he would then get an area of x squared equals negative 10x equals plus 39. And then he would draw the square again, but he would draw four rectangles on the right side of the square. And after x, and it would be labeled with a width on each side of the rectangle of 10 fourth, which is 2.5. So it would be 2.5, 2 .5, 2 .5, 2 .5, 2 .5, and x, and x, x, and x. Okay. So if you know the area, is x squared plus 4 times 2.5x equals x squared plus 10x, which equals 39. So you would have a larger square, and here would be the inner square, which is a smaller one, just a width. So the corners would be equal to the width of the smaller squares, which is 2.5, all around. Here are the unknowns. And then he can figure out that if equal, there is equal of the whole entire rectangle, the larger rectangle is equal to x squared plus 4 times 2.5 squared, which equals 39 plus 25, which equals 64. So then he would get, we use x plus 5 equals 64 squared equals 64. You take Okay, so now all for Zami can now use, he can find the square root of both sides. So you get x plus 5 in parentheses equals 8 or negative 8. And if two solutions would be x equals 3 and x equals negative 13.